chica. All right, in this video, we're going to look at how to solve a periodic functions question. Let's first take a look at the steps. All right, our first step is to identify it as a periodic function. Makes sense? We'll identify our variables, determine the period, which is the time that it takes to complete one full cycle. We'll determine how many cycles will fit into the desired time frame. And then we'll subtract the whole number of cycles. We're really concerned with the portion that's left. If it's only full cycles, it's pretty easy. And then we'll multiply by the period, and that'll tell us exactly how, um, how many units we're going to go in. Now, if you're good at mental math, you can actually uh, combine steps five and six into one step by focusing at dividing and then looking at the remainder or the amount that's left. Uh, after that, you're going to find the value of y for that particular point. And that's going to be the same as the y value at the point that we're concerned with. And that's because the periodic function has a repeating pattern. And the last thing we'll do is go back and answer the specific question we're being asked. So we have a lot of steps here, but fortunately most of them are pretty quick. So let's look at them using an example. So during the month of September, Eric closely followed his bank account and graphed it on the Cartesian plane shown below. Uh, he noticed that it followed the same repeating pattern as he earned money and then spent it on various weekly expenses. On October 30th, Eric needs to pay $225 for his college textbooks and is worried that he won't have enough money in his account. If this pattern continues, how much money will Eric have in his bank account after he pays the $225 for his textbook? And if he owes money, we'll show this as a negative balance. Now, this is actually a pretty real-life situation uh, and pretty practical if you've ever had a large payment coming out and you're concerned if you'll have the, uh, the balance in your uh, bank account. If you have a lot of money in your bank account all the, all the time, it's not so big of a worry, but uh, a lot of us kind of live paycheck to paycheck. So the other thing I'll point out is your bank account is probably not this predictable, but the same general patterns are probably there. So let's take a look at our steps. First, we have to identify it as a periodic function. This is actually pretty easy. The periodic function just means that we have the same pattern repeating over and over again. And if we look at the graph, we can quite clearly see that's what ha what's happening. The bank, the, his account goes up, up a little bit more, down, levels off, and then goes down again, and then goes through that same process, and then almost a third time into a cycle. We can also look up at the top where it says we have Front of me, the same repeating pattern. So that becomes uh, pretty obvious. Another thing to note with periodic functions, at least as we look at them in grade 10 math, you're not going to have a formula for them. Next, we're going to identify our variables, and uh, x is almost always time. Now, if we look at the x axis here, it's actually showing the date. Well, date is another way of showing time, so we'll actually say that x is our number of days. And I'm going to make a little bit of our change to our values here. It's a little bit odd when our first value we're showing is a 9, representing September 9th. So I'm going to consider that our starting point or 0. Now that means that day 10, uh, pardon me, September 10th will actually be day 1, September 11th will be day 2, so on and so forth. And September 29th, means we'll go to the end, will represent day 20. Uh, next we're going to look at our y-axis and labeling it up here, it says it's our, the account balance, so how much Eric has left in his bank account on that particular day. Our next step is to determine the period. Well, that's how long it takes to complete one cycle. Well, where does the cycle start? I'm going to start it here, and then when does it go through the pattern and get back to where it starts? Well, it comes up and down, and then it ends right there, and then it starts the same pattern again. So that's one cycle. And my period is just how long it takes to go through one cycle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. So in this case, one cycle equals seven days. And we actually we could have got that above if we read reading the question, because it says focusing on his weekly expenses here. So that makes sense. Seven days is a week. So let's look at our next step. We have to determine how many cycles will fit into the desired time frame. Well, what's our desired time frame here? Well, we want to know where he's going to be on October the 30th. 
Now, if our graph showed October 30th, this would be a pretty easy problem. We could just read it off the graph. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Now, if you, you could potentially continue the graph, but it's going to take a little while to continue the pattern. And so if we focus on some of the, on some of the patterns that's involved, we can actually do it a lot quicker than trying to continue the, the graph. So we want to figure out how many cycles will fit into the desired time frame. But first, I need to know, well, how many days in is October the 30th? Well, we said September 9th is day 0. And that means September 29th, where the graph ends, represents day 20. All right, let's go day 20. Now, how many days are left in September? Well, 30 days in September. So if, if day 20 represents September 29th, I'm going to have one more day in September. And then we want to know October 30th. So we're going to have another 30 days. So we want to know where is uh, the, what's the bank account going to be at 51 days into this pattern. So now I have to figure out well, how many cycles are going to happen in 51 days. And to find that, I'm just going to divide my number of days by the uh, period or the length of the cycle. Now I'm actually going to show the units here because that can uh, kind of make, help things make a bit sense. So we have 51 days. And I want to divide it by seven, seven days uh, per cycle. And when we do that, we actually have days divided by days, which cancels out. And it's going to tell us our number of cycles. So if you take out your calculator, 51 divided by 7 gives us 7.2857. And actually, it continues on past that, but we'll, we'll round it there. And that represents the number of cycles. So after 51 days, we've gone in seven full cycles, and then 0 0.2857 uh, of the next cycle. All right, step five, subtract the whole number of cycles and just focus on the decimal. So if we were exactly seven cycles in, it'd be easy. We'd be right at the start. The question is, how far in, or how many days in, is 0.2857 cycles? So we're going to subtract the seven, and that just gives us the point. 2857. So that's what we're most concerned with here. Step six is we'll multiply the decimal by the period. So I'm going to take the point 2857, which actually represents the number of cycles that were left. And I'm going to take the point 2857 and mult uh, which is cycles. I guess may as well do our units. And I'll multiply that by the period, which is seven days per cycle. And again, if we look at the units, it's kind of neat. We have cycles times or divided by cycles. So our cycles actually cancel out, and it's going to tell us how many days it is. Now, if you do that, you'll find it comes out to 2, or a number very close to 2. So it leaves us 2 days left. So what this means is 51 days in, We'll have gone through seven complete cycles. So seven starting and ending right at the exact same spot. So after f uh, 49 days, we're going to be right here. And then for 51 days, we're going to be another two days in. One, two. So it's going to put us right here. And we can see at that point, he would have $200 in the bank. Now, if you're good at mental math, you can actually save this little step here. 51 divided by 7 is what? It's 7, 7 full, with a remainder of 2. So 7 full cycles with a remainder of uh, 2 days. And so that's where the 2 days connects there. So again, if you're good at mental math, you can actually do that and save yourself uh, a little bit of time. And so our step 7, actually, we want to find the value of y at this point. I already did that one, actually. So we, at uh, 11 days, pardon me, uh, pardon me, 51 days in or on October 30th, we'll have the same account balance as two days in, which is September the 11th. And we can see that's $200. And then our last piece is to go and answer the question. Well, what's our question asking? How much money will he have after he pays the $225 for his textbooks? Well, he's going to have, so I'll put label this on October 30th. He's going to have $200 at the start of the day. And then we got to take away the $225 for his textbooks. 
And what we'll notice is he's not going to have enough. He's going to have to uh, go into the negative and, or, or overdraft, and he'll have negative $25. So he's going to owe an extra $25 to cover his textbooks. And so uh, we've answered the question there. Usually we'd write out a statement so we could say uh, he will owe $25. And there you go. Thanks for watching.